long I've been living. If you guys are new here, welcome to my motherhood channel. My name is Emily. This is where I take care of all things mom. Now I have to be honest, part of me really wanted to make this like a get it all done video, but my left leg has been killing me. I It's been like throbbing. So I figured I would just take it easy on myself and share a recipe that I have shared and made like a short and sweet recipe video in the past. So I will link that up above in case you guys just want to see the recipe later on and you want to make it and don't want to hear me talk too much at least. But we are going to be making sour cream drop cookies and just kind of chatting a bit. So before I actually get started baking, let me tell you why I'm making these. So I'm making these for my family's Christmas party. In the past growing up, we would celebrate on Christmas Eve, but since all of my siblings now are like getting married and having kids, it's just easier if we celebrate at a totally different day and then we can all go to our in-laws house for their celebrations and come together and celebrate on like a non designated Christmas day or Christmas Eve or anything like that. So we are celebrating on the 30th and I volunteered to, you know, bake something to bring. So my mom asked me if I could whip these up and that is why we are making sour cream drop cookies today. So one of the things that I have been kind of doing lately as I've been baking recipes that I've made many, many times is I've actually been breaking out my food scale and writing like how many grams each ingredient is. And I did that actually just to make my whole life a little bit easier. Now, I've obviously pre-measured this. I used my measuring cups, threw them in the washer, you know, so there's a lot to clean up. But if you have a food scale and you know like how many grams of a certain ingredient you need, all you need to do is like put your bowl on the food scale and like measure out that much. You don't need extra measuring cups or anything like that. And it just makes life easier and less things to clean and so on. So that is why I'm going to be kind of measuring things as I add them in just to make my life easier in the future the next time that I make these cookies. So the first thing that we actually are gonna do is we're gonna mix the shortening, the sugar and the eggs together. So I'm gonna quickly just transfer the sugar to a different bowl just so I can you know, measure it when I pour it in uh, before it gets too messy around here. All right, so one and a half cups of sugar is about 310 grams. This morning I saw like a little scoop out of the sugar, so I'm hoping that this is still the right amount. Aubrey probably tried to steal some, but I'm gonna write that down on my recipe card so the next time I can just take my big sugar container out and pour it in a bowl. Okay, and then we're gonna add half a cup of shortening. So I'm gonna zero this out, and we're just gonna see how much shortening this is in grams. Now it won't be perfect because there is some residue in this bowl. And normally if I don't pre-measure into these bowls, I would just kind of scrape it from the measuring cup into the bowl. So this is kind of making life a little bit more difficult, but it is good to pre-measure because, because I started pre-measuring last night, I realized I didn't have enough sugar. So I had to have Juan pick some up from the store. Okay, that's pretty much the best I can do about 115 grams. Now the nice thing about doing this again is the next time I make this, I can take my shortening container, put it on my food scale and zero it out and scoop out just 115 grams, toss it in the bowl and I'm good to go. The only thing I've dirtied is my spatula, which I would have been using anyways. But now that this is relatively scraped clean, I'm gonna go ahead and just toss this in our empty dishwasher to make life easier and clean as I go. All right, and then two eggs. I'm not gonna measure because I always have like eggs. I never buy the liquid stuff. So if you are not an experienced baker, or even if you are, honestly, I don't crack eggs perfect all the time. It is nice to crack them into a bowl first in case there are any shells or in case you get a rotten egg which doesn't happen very often, but um, it's good to kind of put it in another thing first before you pour it into your actual baking bowl. I'm just gonna set this one aside to place my spatula and we're gonna beat this up. Okay, so that's relatively well mixed. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add in one cup of sour cream and one teaspoon of vanilla. So I did measure out the sour cream using a measuring cup, but a cup of sour cream should be eight ounces. So 
Let's go ahead and see exactly how well that measuring cup did. Now, you might have noticed that I'm talking sometimes in grams, and in this case, I'm talking ounces. In general, I like to talk about in grams because in my opinion, I feel like it's more specific or more like down to the exact amount than ounces. But this thing switches back and forth, and actually this is eight and a quarter ounces. So it's maybe I added in slightly more than a cup, but it's all good. And before we blend this up, we're gonna add in one teaspoon of vanilla. I'll probably use my little teaspoon measuring spoon every time I bake this, but we'll measure out the grams just in case. All right, so that's about five grams of vanilla extract. So now we're just gonna blend this up. Definitely a lot more creamy and consistent. I'm just gonna give the sides a scrape so that we get anything that was pushed up on the sides of the bowl and not actually mixed in with the rest. Now you wouldn't think like sour cream cookies by themselves would taste very good, but they are delicious and our family loves it at Christmas time. So now that this has been mixed up, we are gonna be adding our flour, which is two and three quarters cups. I'll figure out the grams in a second, as well as half a teaspoon of baking powder, baking soda, and salt. So what I kinda of want to do just to make sure that the dry ingredients get nicely incorporated is to pour the half a teaspoon of each of those three smaller ingredients into the flour, but I do wanna know how many grams the flour is before I pour it in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my flour on my scale, I'm gonna zero it out, so that is the standard, and then I'm gonna add these ingredients in, give it a little whisk, and when I dump it out, these little ingredients would have been added in, taken out, and then what will be left is taken off is the flour leaving the bowl. So that will tell me how many grams my flour actually is. So we got half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of baking soda. And these guys are going in to our flour mixture. Eight grams, even if my mathematical mind didn't calculate this well right now with the uh, calculations here, eight grams wouldn't make that big of a deal with the flour anyways. All right, so we're just gonna give this just a little whisk just to make sure that those smaller and important ingredients get kind of well distributed within the flour. And then we're gonna go ahead and pour this in and mix it up nicely. All right, so putting the bowl back on, 397 grams. So before I mix this up, I don't want the flour to totally fly everywhere, so I am gonna use my spatula just to kind of somewhat incorporate it. So. I don't have flour everywhere and look like we had a snowstorm in this house. definitely thickened it up a bit. Again, I'm gonna scrape down the sides as best as I can to not leave any flour on the walls of the bowl. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, my leg, like I said, has been throbbing, hurting. I, I've been like limping around, which has made, you know, getting it all done pretty difficult. So if you are here watching this video and you really were hoping that it would be more than just baking, I really appreciate you sticking around. I hope to be a little bit more mobile uh, soon, especially since we have Jack and my birthday coming up. Um, I'm going to be, because, okay, let's just get this straight. He's turning one. He's never going to remember it. We're only going to see pictures. He's not really into anything so far. I kind of feel like one-year-old birthday parties that are super themed out are more for the parents than they are for the actual kid. And since it's gonna be like combined with my birthday party, I don't want to do anything too elaborate, at least this year. So 
I'm actually reusing a lot of Aubrey's construction birthday party theme, um, like materials that I made and trying to make it a little bit easier on myself. In the future, I'll go all out with him or as, you know, as all out as I can. Uh, but you know, for the first year, he's not going to remember. And I have all the stuff anyways, and I wanted to like, at least get one more use out of it. So that is what we're going to be doing in a couple of weeks for our birthdays. So hopefully I'll be more mobile then and put out some good like party prep or party cleaning up videos for you guys. But in, you know, the meantime, please let me know, like if you guys, maybe I can do like an about me. I know that we have some new people around here who haven't really been here since the beginning. So if you guys have questions for me about myself that I can share in a future video and just do like a sit and chat, that would be really helpful <laughs> for my body to like heal. Or if there's any other like kind of simple content that you guys would like that might make it a little bit easier on me, I'd really appreciate your guys' input so I can still give you content that you want, but also take care of my body. Okay, I think we're done with the food scale, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that away. So this dough needs to be chilled for at least an hour, and at this point, there are a couple different things you can do. You can just chill it right away. You can add in two ounces of melted chocolate if you want. I've never made the chocolate version. I'm kind of interested in trying that in the future, but we're not gonna do that this time just because I'm making like the traditional sour cream cookies for my family. So instead of chocolate, instead of just leaving it like this color, we're gonna be swirling in some color. So you can just dye this totally one color because it's Christmas themed uh, like I did in my original recipe video. We're gonna be just doing swirls of green and red using some of the food coloring that I had on hand. And I'm gonna be doing like a method of like layering the different colors so that when I do scoop it out, I get a little bit of red, a little bit of green, and a little bit of the just standard kind of off-white color of the cookie. So there's no reason to preheat your oven now because we've got to chill this for at least an hour. But when you do preheat your oven, you're gonna want to preheat it to 400 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna just transfer it to this smaller bowl because I think it will all fit. And I'm gonna do like a scoop or two scoops of the dough, kind of spread it out about an inch thick around the bottom of the bowl because it is thicker, it's a thicker batter. And then I'll take like a toothpick, dip it in my food coloring and swirl it in this layer of the dough. So with this gel food coloring, you really only need like a little bit. And like I said, I'm not actually dyeing the whole thing. I'm just kind of swirling it anyway. So I even need less than what I would need if I wanted to color this just one color. Okay, so the first layer is done. Now we're gonna do another like two scoops of the batter on top and swirl in some green food coloring. Now you could again swirl in like all the colors of the rainbow if you wanted like rainbow cookies or if you're doing like Halloween, you could swirl in black and orange food coloring if you wanted. Since again, I'm doing Christmas, I'm just gonna do green and red, but you could really make these themed to like whatever you want. If you're throwing a themed party, color it whatever you want to like fit your party theme and it will definitely add to the party. And now we're gonna scoop out some Kelly green and give this a little swirl. It's really tempting to like keep swirling, but then I'm, I have to remind myself, like I do want there to be some of the off-white, so gotta call it quits right now. And then we're just gonna repeat this process over and over until all of the dough from this bowl is transferred into the smaller one, and then I'm gonna pop it in the fridge. So I'm gonna let that chill for at least an hour. I probably won't actually get to baking it until Jack wakes up and then goes back down for his other nap so that I'm just like one less kid to worry about. I have Aubrey here, you know, licking the uh, little mixers, which is, you know, 
it's kind of mandatory when you're a kid and it's Christmas time. But now I've used up all my bowls, put them in the dishwasher, so everything is, it feels nice and clean. I definitely like starting this kind of process with a clean dishwasher so that I can clean as I go and then not have like a big mess to hand wash or anything like that. So I will check back in when I actually get to baking. But like I mentioned, this is for our family gathering. And at that family gathering, we also do like a homemade gift exchange. And so in an upcoming video, that will be one of the things I take it easy on myself again. I have to make my homemade craft. So I will be sharing that with you guys as well. In addition to all of the other crafts that my family members made. So stay tuned for that, but I will go ahead and check in when it's time to bake. So Jack just recently went down for a nap and it has been obviously over an hour since I put the cookie dough in the fridge to chill. So now we are going to scoop them out using my cookie scoop and bake them at 400 degrees for eight to 10 minutes. The cookies are now done, they have cooled. I did break into one, Juan stole one, just to kind of show you guys how nice and doughy they are. So before anyone else steals any more cookies, I gotta package these guys up. This made 50 cookies um, using my cookie scoop. So if you have a cookie scoop, you know, that's kind of where we're at. But I only have 48 left and that is like probably gonna be enough for everyone to have two cookies at the party. I don't know if everyone eats them, but we can't eat any more in this house. So actually the nice thing is they freeze really well. So I'm going to put them in a container using some wax paper and toss them in the freezer so that no one else eats any. If you guys are planning on giving this a try, make sure you let me know down below in the comments. If you guys are new here, I would love for you to stick around and subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, 
That may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.